The next batch, <coughs> we'll start with Robert. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the nominee, um, you know, when Jubilee came into power in 2013, they marketed the last mile connectivity uh, very, very well. In fact, uh, citizens were of the opinion that they would all be connected within like a month or so. And so that has brought uh, a lot of pressure on members of parliament because whenever uh, people are not connected, they have this belief that the member of parliament is seeking to only power some areas in their constituencies and not others. It, uh, I would like you to, from your opinion, uh, you know, having, having of course uh, studied the situation, to tell us what will you do to ensure that this pressure is taken out of members of parliament? Because uh, members, uh, you know, the, the public thinks it's, a, it's, a, it's our issue. Now, the other issue is, um, is an issue of public confidence, uh, Honorable Andai, in that office, and considering that you have been also with us in the minority. Um, you know, and, and I'm saying this because you know what Kenyans out there have said, and it will be important for you to address them from this, uh, from this point. What can you tell those Kenyans that believe that you took advantage of the young Kenyan demonstrators some of whom who died while they were demonstrating, so that you could uh, negotiate your way into government. Uh, uh, Owen? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, after that bomb from your former deputy, I, I want you... <laughs> uh, uh, from your former deputy, I just want to, you to focus on cost of power, yeah. uh, Honorable Wanai. Yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I would like to get uh, full attention. Uh, Honorable Wanai, the cost of power in this country is, is such that it is over the roof. If you get a power bill, you look at it, you know you're paying so many things apart from, uh, in fact, the units that you, you are paying for actually become... Uh, a small part of what you're paying for. For this country to rise or fall in terms of manufacturing, in terms of production, the cost of living and the prices of items, it all falls and all rises on the sword of, the, of power cost. For which, in your statements, you have said this country, in parliament, many times in parliament you've said that the cost of living in this country is very, very high. But one of the biggest contributors of that cost of that co high cost of living is power. You are in the middle of it. Apart from thinking about reticulation of power, apart from thinking about uh, all these other things, you have a big elephant in the room. How do you bring the cost of power in this country to, to reduce the cost of life and also to increase manufacturing, industrialization, and all those other things? Thank you, Honorable Andai. Rugara. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Domini, the ministry you are just about to take over if this committee and the House approves you is one of the key ministries in the country akin to roads, water, and every Kenyan is looking upon you to be connected to electricity. And there are not two options to it. Even before I ask you the question, it's good to know that there are historical injustices in terms of power supply in the country, such that take the case of the year 2017, the Raka constituency was at 9.5% connectivity to the national grid. At the same time, Gatundu South constituency was at 100%. These are all equal Kenyans, there really should not be that disparity. Number two, we have schools. Schools where electricity is just but mandatory. Yet, those areas are not connected to the national grid, and the children are supposed to compete competitively in national exams, which are standard. My question to you is, would you be subscribing to a form of affirmative action in terms of electricity supply to constituencies 
which have lagged behind, and it's just not a Tharaka. You go to Mwinge North, you go to Mbalambala, which is also my neighbor, Bere North, Bere South. These actually have been discriminated against. And therefore, would you be prepared to take affirmative action in respect of those constituencies? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to Honorable Opio Wandai, the nominee. Uh, my colleagues have talked about uh, electricity. You have talked about the transformers. Do you see we need to move away from oil-based transformers? Because every other day, you will hear people uh, removing the oil from the transformers, and we have got transformers which do not work sometimes or we have got a shortage of transformers. So do you see, will you do research? Because I've done, if you go to the Western world, you do not see any transformer, and I know you've been there. So you do not see transformers there. Do you think we can have KPLC having a company where it will be having uh, fiber optic? I know they are doing it right now, but because of the ICT of uh, this government to deliver uh, fiber optic to each and every place because it's a vast network as you have spoken about it. The last one is about the Kenya Pipeline refinery. Um, your predecessor, if you are confirmed, who was here, Davis Chirchir, he said they were looking at it once um, the oil which uh, Honorable Posing has talked about, the Tolo oil and all that, once it's done. But I believe if that refinery was there, we could even get cheaper fuel and refine it the way it used to be. So do you think it is possible under your watch if you are confirmed? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable. You can answer those. Honorable Speaker. Yes, it is, indeed it is true. Uh, that is, with respect to Honorable Mbui's question, that members of parliament are facing serious pressure from the public on the matter of last mile uh, connectivity in the respective constituencies. And because again, it has been taken for granted that this is the work of the MPs, okay? Which they have been doing, of course, very diligently, diligently in collaboration with the REREC. Uh, Honorable Speaker, what we need to do, in my view, is to properly resource REREC. Properly resource REREC as we work on the efficiencies for this role electrification to be fast-tracked. As we speak, the data I have is that we are at about 76% penetration. That, of course, is theoretical. Because, you know, in some areas, it's as low as 10%, while in others it is over 100%. Over yes. So I'm very much alive to that fact. In fact, we need also to bring on board counties, called county governments. Honorable Speaker, under Schedule 4 of the Constitution, the counties have got a role also in energy, uh, more so in street light. Okay? What has happened in the past is that Rerek has been able to build street lights, which street lights go off soon after they are commissioned for lack of payment of bills and maintenance, which they presume is the mandate of the counties, Honorable Speaker. So I, my, my view, this set of affairs is not tenable. We must make a decision, and I'll be coming back to Parliament. Okay? We must make a decision. Or as to whether to empower REREC fully, fully, to be able to be in charge of this uh, uh, street lighting, in, up to including uh, payment of bills. But more importantly, if we can now move away from the grid, national grid, and establish solar street lights, okay, which will be easy to, to manage in the long term. That's the discussion we must have urgently, because these are important uh, facilities. Honorable Speaker, on the matter of public confidence, as raised by Honorable Mumbui. You know, Honorable Speaker, I am very clear in my mind. Extremely clear. Because I've been on, I've been on this space for quite some time. time, time. The Gen Zs, 
of the youth. We are not raising any different issues from the issues you and I, Honorable Mbui, have raised over the, over the years. They could have had a different style, okay? But the issues they were raising were pertinent issues, which you all agree must be, dealt, must be dealt with, okay? And therefore, it is not proper to say that we have taken advantage of the Gen Z's uh, uh, clamor to, to get into government. First and foremost, Honorable Speaker, I never applied to join the executive, but I was pleasantly surprised and felt greatly honored <laughs> that my name was recommended. <laughs> You and this is the president went ahead to nominate you, me. You know the facts. Just answer the questions. So, Honorable Speaker, <laughs> so Honorable Speaker, uh, I still maintain the view that uh, uh, we are not in any way uh, uh, in betrayal of the court. Don't allow Mbui to bully you. Of the youth, yes. And have no apologies. Yes. yes. But again, again, Honorable Speaker, as I conclude on that one, you know, you know, we are basically uh, coming on board uh, in a paradigm shift. I'm very pleased that the president has actually declared that we have to adopt a paradigm shift in the management of government and state affairs. And I'm most privileged, if I'm approved. In our country. In our country. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. We are living in different times. In yes. Yes. We must also think differently. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable Bayer, you are right. The, the, cost, the cost of power is exorbitant in Kenya. Even if we compare ourselves to our neighboring countries, especially Ethiopia and, uh, and even Uganda, really. But part of the reason why our cost of power is high, is too high, is the exorbitant amount of commercial and technical losses that Kenya Power especially in CAS. Kenya Power loses up to 23% of the power it buys from the generators. Okay? In other words, it doesn't sell. Almost 23% of the power it buys from the generators. Inefficiency and recklessness. You yes, there are many you factors. You assure the country that this will stop. This is going to be managed. I can't say it will stop, Honorable Speaker, because in any scientific process, there can be losses, but Very they, have, they have to be reasonable losses, Honorable Speaker. Yes. So we are going to work closely with the KPLC, and I'm happy, Honorable Speaker, by the work the KPLC management is doing currently. As a matter of fact, I'm privy to the information that they have done some turnaround. I'm not allowed by the rules of the CMA to get into details, but they have done some turnaround, and they may post some good figures in the coming... Don't be prejudiced by briefs you have received. <laughs> You'll get there and learn. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm just being optimistic yes. <laughs> and giving the country hope <laughs> to borrow your words. Yes. Okay. Continue. Honorable Speaker, let me dash to the question, sorry, by Honorable Daoud. Murugara. Murugara first. Murugara, yes. Uh, Honorable Speaker, it is true there have been historical injustices. Okay. And we must work together in terms of addre addressing these injustices or these imbalances. We must correct them that systematically. But I must also throw a challenge to our, my colleagues in the National Assembly because I'm aware that this lopsided allocation of resources, especially on energy and electricity, is also coming from us in Parliament at the budget time. The agencies, the ministries, is, are receiving printed estimates with figures which they cannot change, they can't touch. Which figures are scary, Honorable Speaker? You find one constituency being allocated upwards of 400 million Kenya shillings, while another one is getting a paltry 10 million Kenya shillings in the same financial year. So we must also actually do some introspection as a house to help us. Uh, in the ministry, if and when I am approved, to deal with this issue. You know, once you bring in printed estimates, the ministry, the agencies have got no leg room. They have no room to maneuver. Okay? So these imbalances, these injustices may continue. 
uh, uh, within, as, as we watch, only they will speak. Uh, there is also the issue of solars for schools. There's, there is currently a very robust project being undertaken by REREC, the solar for schools. We want to follow through this project to ensure that at least every school in this country is able to benefit. Point of order, no, no, no. Point of order. Uh, Sorry, George? Me. Point of order. Solar has been tried from time immemorial. It works only for one month, two months, it just dies. And those schools will remain in the books of KPLC or whoever that they are connected through solar when actually it is not working. So it doesn't make sense whatsoever for Kenya Power or for Relic to introduce or to go back to that solar business. Let us get connection to the national grid so that we also assured of constant electricity supply. Point of order, Chairman, on the same. Yes. And you know, this has been, this was done mostly from the regions mm. we, I come from. It is so that if you do electricity,